So today we're talking a little bit about the who, what, when, where, why, everything about adrenal testing. Now many times when I ask patients and clients if they've heard of adrenal fatigue, they kind of get this far away look in their eyes and they nod and say something like, yeah, I've kind of heard of it. Someone mentioned it this one time. While doing this, they often reach th for their throat thinking that their adrenal glands are in their throat. <clears throat> somewhere near the thyroid or somewhere in the general neck area. What they're doing is mistaking something that sounds familiar to the adrenals, which are called the adenoids, which are in the back of the throat. Your adrenal glands are actually located in your back, right on top of your kidneys. Now, you may hear the argument or comment from many traditional doctors that adrenal fatigue doesn't exist. That's because they're only taught about what is called adrenal failure. This is when the adrenal glands completely stop producing cortisol and you have to go on cortisol shots. From their perspective, like many traditional doctors, they think that health is either black or white, good or bad, healthy or sick. They don't think that there's anything in between. So if you're not in adrenal failure, they think that your adrenal glands are fine and thus adrenal failure or fatigue does not exist. Many of us are too stressed these days and it can have negative consequences on our bodies, our brain, promoting chronic disease and rapid brain degeneration leading to neurodegenerative issues such as dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, etc. Now, if you're concerned about the effects of stress on your body and how to manage it, an adrenal salivary test is an important ally. It can show you whether your stress hormone cortisol is too, too high, too low, too high then too low, or too low then too high, or any of those different combinations. It can also tell you whether this has affected or may affect your sleep-wake cycle, also known as your circadian rhythm. Now stay tuned for the end of this. I'm going to give you a special offer on a reduced price of getting your adrenals tested and where to get this done. And for the first 50 people that do this, I'm also going to offer a free interpretation of this and some recommendations that can help you based off of your adrenal testing results. So what are some symptoms of low adrenal hormones? And this is in no particular order. Low adrenal hormones can often cause fatigue, slow starting in the mornings, crash in the afternoon, craving sweets, caffeine, nicotine, or other stimulants to help keep you going. You may be prone to moodiness. You become shaky, lightheaded, irritable uh, if you go too long without eating, such as the hypoglycemic person. You may also be the type of person that generally tends to wake up at about three or four in the afternoon, or not in the afternoon, in the morning, um, wide awake and with an inability to go back to sleep. You might become dizzy when moving from sitting to standing because your blood pressure can't compensate for when you get that change in elevation and all the blood comes rushing out of your head. Now, on the flip side, some symptoms of high adrenal hormones include excess belly fat, right? That's what most people associate with excess cortisol nowadays. Insulin resistance, which is high blood sugar, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, or what's also known as uh, syndrome X. Trouble falling asleep, waking up not feeling rested, Women can grow facial hair and men can grow breasts. And PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is another very common thing that we see in my practice. And the list goes on and on for many different ways that the adrenals can affect your overall health. So how do you do an adrenal salivary test? Well, it's actually very simple. To perform the adrenal salivary test, all you do is simply collect uh, multiple small vials several times throughout the day of your saliva, which is in your test kit. The lab will then analyze your saliva for cortisol levels and how much cortisol you produce in the morning, afternoon, evening, before bed, um, and then many times it'll often include what's called a cortisol awakening response, or CAR for short. Now, when you do this test, do not do something unusual or stressful on the day of the test. You want an average day. If you're super relaxed and there's nothing going on, that's going to skew it. If you've got a super stressful day at work, running around, picking up the kids, soccer, cooking, all this stuff, right? It's not going to give you your, your typical day. So do this on a day that is normal. Now, it's important to understand that low or high adrenal hormones usually don't reflect a problem solely with the adrenal glands which again are two glands that sit on top of your kidneys in the back. 
Instead, chronic stress can also affect pathways in the brain which start to dysfunction with chronic stress. Now, let me be clear. When I say stress, I am not just talking about mental stress, which is most people go right to that and they think, oh, I'm not stressed. I am th talking about mental, physical, chemical, emotional, spiritual, nutrient deficiencies, nutrient excesses, toxins, whatever the case may be. So it isn't just being too busy, a bad job, bad relationship, and so forth for this chronic stress. It's all of these other things. So think stress, anything on your body that's stress. In addition to uh, all those types of stress, some lesser known factors of chronic stress include unstable blood sugar, usually from too many carbs, chronic infections, leaky gut, autoimmune disease, and etc. Now, using a second and third adrenal salivary test allows you to track whether you're successfully managing your condition. Adrenal health should improve as these conditions improve and you support your body's body in ways that helps it deal with the stress. You can't remove stress, but it's a matter of managing and dealing with the stress so your body can adapt to it better. If your adrenal health does not improve, it means you must keep investigating as to why uh, you have this body stress and deal with it as best as possible. The why is probably the most important thing, and that's the basis of functional medicine. Now keep in mind we can't remove all stress, nor should we. Some stress is normal and healthy for the body, such as exercise. There is an acronym called SAID, S-A-I-D, and it stands for Specific Adaptation to Impose Demand. It basically states that our bodies will adapt to what we demand of it. Without stress, our bodies don't adapt and we deteriorate. Basically, use it or lose it. Now, a sleep-wake cycle, or circadian rhythm, that is out of whack is one symptom of adrenal stress. If the circadian rhythm is normal, then cortisol is highest in the morning and lowest at night. This is what allows us to feel alert when we wake up and sleepy before we go to bed. Many people with altered circadian rhythms notice that they're maybe more awake at night, or they may notice an energy crash in the morning or the afternoon and being wide awake in the middle of the night. And we'll discuss this a little bit in more detail when I show you what that looks like on my fancy iPad. No, nah, not really fancy, but on my, uh, I have a whiteboard app on here that I'm gonna show you what a normal adrenal test looks like and all the different alterations and patterns that you can get with different stages of adrenal fatigue. Now, the adrenal salivary test measures your circadian rhythm, the cortisol precursor hormone, DHEA, and your cortisol levels. Some tests, like the one we typically use in my office, also include what's called a cortisol awakening response, or CAR. And again, we'll discuss this uh, and why it's important. It can tell you where you fall on the spectrum of adrenal fatigue of high to low adrenal hormones. And people don't necessarily progress always from high to low. Adrenal function can jump back and forth between phases or stay stuck in one phase. So stand by as I switch screens and we discuss the different levels of adrenal fatigue. And again, stay tuned. At the end, I'm gonna give you a special offer on having your adrenals tested at a reduced price and a free review of your labs along with personalized recommendations based off of your test results. Okay guys, so here we go again. <laughs> this is probably the, I don't know, fifth or sixth time I'm trying to do this. My iPad keeps cutting out. Anyway, here we go. I've got a couple things done and I want to couple, cover a couple other things. So if I missed some things, I apologize. I'm trying to do my best here. And there are some other videos and blogs that we're gonna do. They're gonna kind of fill in the blanks on some of the stuff that I'm talking about. So here is the adrenal cortex stress profile by Genova Diagnostics. The way that you read this is, this is your main results right here. And what they've done is these little black squares are the times that you're doing the test. Ideally, when you do this test, you wanna be in this green zone here. What happens is the normal daily cortisol pattern that we get is kind of along these lines. So if I zoom in up and through here, kind of get this blank space, it's kind of 
get it to dry here. Is it? It's kind of like this. So you're kind of going to bed here, sleeping, waking up, getting the test. So this part correlates to this. So depending on the type of graph that you have or the type of results that you get from this part, that can kind of tell you what potential stage of adrenal fatigue that you're in. Or let's say, let's, let's call it adrenal dysfunction. Because adrenal fatigue, for a lot of traditional doctors, they usually are thinking adrenal failure, which is a pretty rare thing, but as we kind of discussed before, um, for them, it's kind of an all or nothing thing. So if you don't have adrenal failure, they don't think that adrenal fatigue exists. So, so another thing that we want to look at here, or let me explain how kind of adrenal fatigue happens is, and I'm going to zoom in here. So the typical progress or what normally happens when we have a stressful situation, and let's say back in the day when we were kind of wandering the savannah or whatever, and we have theoretically no stress, and let's say we're at a zero, and a bear or a lion comes by, stress levels go way up, bear or lion goes away, stress levels come back down, and you go back to zero. Right? Well, let's make that zero. Okay. Now, in what today, what happens in today's day and age is we have chronic stress. And when I say stress, I'm not just talking mental stress. It's physical, chemical, emotional, spiritual, mold toxicity, nutrient deficiencies, nutrient excesses, all these different types of stress. And your body kind of responds to these very similarly. And so what happens is, let's say you're kind of plugging along at zero. You have a stressful event. It goes way up. And then stressful event kind of goes away, but it doesn't really completely go away. Now it kind of creates this new baseline, right? So now your adrenal glands are kind of like always trying to put out more cortisol. And now what happens when you have another stressful event, maybe it shoots up, but it's not quite as high as what it was before. And now when you go down, now your baseline's a little bit lower. So you kind of get this stair-stepping effect where it's just kind of slowly petering out and going down and down. So you can kind of see your overall progress is, is down. Now, a lot of times in the beginning stages, kind of in through here, when you do this, or you look at things kind of from a, a broad perspective, it might look normal, but when you look at your daily graph here, this might be something where you're waking up normal, and then you're getting ready for work, it get, looks good, and then you're driving on the freeway, shoots way up, and then you're at work, and then you drive home, and then it's kind of like something like that. Or you can wake up in the morning and then just stress all day long, and then you crash. So there's a lot of different things that can um, present on this. Now, another thing about the Genova stress profile here is they do measure your DHEA. DHEA is a hormone precursor for testosterone, estrogens, and estradiols. And a lot of times what can happen, I'll, and I'll explain this in another, um, another blog or video, is when your body is overproducing cortisol, this can create what's known as a cortisol or pregnenolone steal, is this overproduction of cortisol starts to steal pregnenolone away from your DHEA, and now your DHEA goes down, right? It's because you should be in this green box right here. And then as the DHEA goes down, now you don't have those hormone precursors that you need to make testosterone, estrogens, and estradiols. And this can create this whole cascade of events. And then you have low testosterone or low hormone levels. And now your body tries to compensate by making or absorbing more cholesterol because all of your hormones start off as cholesterol. So it just kind of turns into this giant big cluster you know what, which I'll explain in another one. So it's nice that they add the DHEA in here and then they look at the ratio as well. Another thing that I really like is this cortisol awakening response. And this is a fairly new thing within probably the last couple of years. And what they discovered is basically when you wake up first thing in the morning, you should have a um, about a 50% increase in cortisol levels from baseline within about 30 minutes and then it kind of goes back down. So what this is kind of correlating to is when you wake up in the morning, you should have this kind of little like blip right here. And that is what this correlates to right about here. And so as long as you're getting from here to here about a 50% increase in cortisol levels, it's an indication that your adrenal glands are still fairly robust and strong. You can kind of still spit out a good amount of 
um, cortisol. But if that's not happening, it's, it's not a very good sign of uh, overall adrenal health. So something nice that they kind of add in as well. So that's kind of the basics on the adrenal cortex stress profile. This is one of my uh, favorite tests. We do it on almost all patients, um, especially you know when somebody comes in and they have some sort of chronic health condition, even if uh, adrenal fatigue and anxiety and depression and all that stuff were not one of their main concerns, when they have chronic health conditions, it leads to a lot of these other conditions just because your body is worn out, you're tired. Um, it's a form of stress. Um, so get this done. Um, we are able to offer this test to our YouTube subscribers, um, email subscribers, anybody else that is watching the video that wants to get it done. We're the first 50 people that can that want to do this. Um, follow the link in the description and we are able to offer this at a discounted price of 185. The lowest that I've found this searching online so far has been about 205. So you're saving a good amount of money there. And we will also give you some recommendations, uh, general recommendations based off of um, common graphs and curves that can happen on this. Uh, this is not a substitute for medical advice, so don't take it as that, but it can be really good, kind of um, a, a good start to kind of get you down that path. And if this is something you need a little bit more help with um, and you're not quite sure, you know, uh, if you need a functional medicine doctor, you can give our office a call. It's 833-DR-CRAIG or 833-372-7244. And as always, um, if you want, we do Skype and Zoom. Um, but if you want somebody that's closer, I recommend, you know, check out uh, the IFM.org, uh, Institute of Functional Medicine. They have a list of all their certified practitioners, which I am one as well. Um, and uh, I am a certified practitioner as well, which makes a big difference because I've gone through all the classes and the testing and all that stuff. So I'm Dr. Craig Morrison. Hope you enjoyed the video. Get your adrenal cortex stress profile done. And uh, I will see you next time.